Good morning, I am Janice Christopher Lee and today we are going to talk about seven classroom structures that support student relationship. So as pre-service teachers, we should go beyond rapport and establish a good teacher relationship. We should build trust, show empathy, and set proper expectations to our learners. Proactive classroom structures go beyond the design and layout of the classroom. Principles in structured classrooms apply to any student regardless of grade level or disability status. So all of them are fundamental elements for positive teacher-student relationships. So first is what we call shared ownership. So we should co-construct reasonable, socially valid classroom rules with students in language that they understand clearly. When we co-construct classroom rules with our students, they feel a sense of ownership, accountability, and authority. They're less likely to view the rules as externally enforced, so we should ask them suggestions while guiding them to also create rules that we require. So in this way, we establish the rules that we wanted as a teacher, but written in the language that students used to create them. Also, when a student breaks a rule, this strategy will allow us to refer back to the process when we used to create the set of rules. This process really enhances student ownership. Second is clarity. Teachers should explain natural and realistic consequences for following the rules as well as for violating the rules. Setting of proper expectations and clear boundaries is a must when it comes to building positive relationship with our students. We should inform the students what they could expect to receive when, f when they follow our rules. Otherwise, what would happen if the rules are violated? The third is purpose. Teachers should establish academic expectations and give clear directions for completing every assignment. Because our students want to know three things. What are we doing? How do we do it? And why is this important? Teachers should inculcate the purpose of the homework so they can be motivated in accomplishing them. Teachers should also ensure that the students know the procedures in accomplishing and training in the tasks, whether they are individual or group efforts. In this way, the purpose of each assignment is clear for both the student and the teacher. Fourth is honesty and fairness. Teachers should enforce firmly, consistently, and predictably. Teachers should minimize inconsistency and surprises. Because our students are keenly aware and sensitive to fairness, especially when it comes to authority figures like us teachers. Being firm but fair establishes the importance of the rule or the process. It also eliminates the perception of favoritism. It lowers the doubt of our students and establishes your fairness credentials as a teacher and as a professional. Students won't be surprised when we enforce rules in class because they are constantly reminded of the rules and they were part of the rulemaking process and they are aware of the consequences of rule infractions. Also, teachers should apply the same consequences to all students regardless. Accompany enforcement of consequences with explanations, questions, or conversations as appropriate to help students realize the relationship between their behavior and the consequences of their behavior. So what does this mean? This means creating mutual respect between the teacher and the student. But how do we do this? We do this by explaining to our students that consequences happen for specific behavior. So um, instead of just punishing them because we thought they did is wrong or scolding them in front of the class, making them feel embarrassed, we may want to talk to them in private with respect. And instead of just us talking, we may want to listen to them to why they did such a thing or to why they acted like that. And then after assessing the situation, we may want to explain to them that what they did is wrong and that it equates to a specific consequences that they deserve. To show them that what they did is wrong and of course to teach them a lesson to not do it again. 
help the child consider behavior alternatives and their possible consequences while emphasizing self-control and independent functioning. What's the advantage? Creating independent trust. Although students may not verbally say thank you, but they do appreciate positive guidelines. Instilling them phrases like, are you making a good decision? Are you making a good behavioral choice? Keep in mind you have choices. The behavioral choice is yours, but remember what our consequences are. You are choosing your behavior right now. And is this the choice you want to make? So um, if we keep telling students those kinds of phrases, we make them think what are their real intentions in making their actions. And also, we are showing that we trust them, that they'll be uh, responsible classroom citizens and that they'll make good decisions. Become the child's ally rather than the child's adversary. Emphasize the positive whenever possible and convey that you expect your students to succeed. So this creates a collaboration and support bond between the teacher and the student. Instead of making the students feel like we are the ones who is giving them the hard stuff or who is making their lives a living hell, why not team up with them? Make them feel like we are with them. Like we're tackling a challenge together. Or by helping them, by making them feel that we struggle with them. Helping them struggle together. And um, support them during good times and even bad times. Create a positive perpetual cycle in the classroom wherein students feel positive and then eventually resulting to positive things happening and we have to be very careful in using positive verbal reinforcement and setting high expectations for our students instead use behavior specific praise not generic phrases wherein students feel their behavioral momentum and that we let them we let them know that we believe in them that they'll succeed and improve um now uh, by following this classroom structures bonds strengthen over time teacher and student bonds and also we develop positive relationship with our students um, so, uh, we have to remember that structures doesn't have to be stiff and rigid because students follow structures and we have to be, we have to provide a flexible frame and uh, depend it to what the student and us teacher agree on too.